Hey everybody, uh, Dr. Deadwax, Mark, back for another uh, recent uh, Vinyl Finds video. Um, a couple of people wrote me and asked me uh, what other things I got in that uh, haul I was showing in the first buys thread, so I thought instead of just uh, pulling things randomly out of the inbox, I'd work my way through uh, what I, that buy for the next couple of the recent Vinyl Finds and just kind of show off uh, what I got that day. So let's start with... Uh, George Duke, I love the blues. She heard my cry. Uh, this is uh, on the uh, MPS um, label, MPS BASF, and uh, there's a shot of the label. And uh, this is uh, like a jazz, funk, blues fusion uh, record. Uh, it really kicks ass. It's uh, um, it's from 1975, and it just has that early to mid 70s funky, earthy sound. Um, uh, not an artist I'm overly familiar with. I know he played with Clinton, um, not Bill, um, and uh, I know he's played on a lot of other people's albums. So uh, there's a hell of a lineup of players on here. Um, I suggest if you get a chance to see this record, you should pick it up. Um, if you see anything on BASF, pick it up. I mean, um, it, everything on that label sounds really, really good. It's really well made. Um, that was two bucks. The next one I got is uh, it's on a label I always buy. Um, it's on CTI, um, Freddie Hubbard Polar AC. Um, I'm not sure if I'm showing these covers or what. I, I've been listening to music, I've been practicing holding up covers. Um, but. Uh, this album has a hell of a lineup. Ron Carter, Billy Cobbin, Jack Dejanet, Lenny White, George Brenson, Hubert Laws, who I was talking about uh, in my last video, uh, Airto, George uh, Cables, Jr. Cook. This killer lineup, really good music. Um, it, it's a good record. Um, it's a little bit overproduced, too much strings. Um, this isn't Freddie Hubbard, Red Clay, Straight Life, Skydive. Um, it's a little slicker, a little more glossy. Um, it's still really good music. It's still worth listening to. It's just not like of a CTI period. These are not. This is not a home run, but this is a, a solid double. Look, God, oh my God, I don't even watch sports, and I'm using baseball analogies. Um, so, highly recommended. It. It's a very listenable album. I will listen to it again. It's just not one of his best. But I mean, I love Freddie Hubbard. I'll buy anything um, that he did, um, even the, the really smooth, slick, syrupy stuff. I, I'm still buying that. Um, the next record is probably one of the best buys. Um, I mean, it's a monster. Um, sorry to steal your word there, Fred, but. Uh, Freddie Ho or Fathead Ray Charles presents David Newman Fathead. This is on Atlantic. Um, this is just an unbelievably good record. Um, it's on that beautiful uh, red and purple Atlantic label. This is, I believe, first pressing. The record is absolutely dead clean. Um, the performances on here are just fantastic. The um, the playing, every everything about this record is great. The the song selection, the, it's just fantastic. I, I mean, wow! I've just said fantastic seventeen times. Am I making myself clear? Um, buy this record, play this record, like this record. Um, there's another fat head is presented by somebody. I can't remember who it is, but. I've heard it at a friend's house. It's like someone so presents Fathead Newman. Uh, I don't know why everybody was present uh, like presenting him at the period and why the hell he wasn't getting his own records, but he did eventually. Um, that other record, uh, I'm not quite sure who it is. Um, great record too. So if you see a record that says so and so presents Fathead, just buy it because they're both great. And this is just great. Best two bucks, two bucks. Best, probably one of the best records I've bought in the past six months. Um, oh, the Freddie Hubbard was 10. It's one of the most expensive records I got. But 
it's still really good and super clean. Next is a, a copy of Yes Relayer. I've had I have a super clean Canadian pressing of this, but this was a this is a first U.S. pressing with the uh, vanity label. Oops, with the vanity labels and, uh, and the dead wax. Um, and then it's got a huge scratch across one side. I don't know if you can see it, but it only ticks for like six revolutions. And um, this has Porky on one side and Peco on the other. So this is a this is a first and it has the A stampers, so there's no way I was leaving this um, for the shot to get a half-decent copy of a first pressing. Um, and uh, so P Porky Paco, as I've mentioned in others, is George Peckham. He was the master engineer. And, um, if you see Porky Peco, uh, Porky's Prime Cut, Pogo, uh, Peco Duck, any of those things signed in the Dead Wax Year Records, you want to buy them. Um, are you... You've got great records if you got them, and if you see them when you're out shopping, you want to buy those copies over other things because um, this, they will just sound better in general as long as the records aren't totally pooched. Um, and that was five bucks, and just a great sounding upgrade. My Canadian pressing is perfect, but um, it, it just kind of compressed, kind of, it's a mid 80s pressing. It's just not, it doesn't have the same energy or the same life or the same space to it. And Yes Music is, I, I love Yes, but Yes Music is very difficult to get sounding just right on vinyl. Next was a great buy, uh, Steve Miller Band, number five. Um, this is his fifth record. Um, and the last record in what I consider his classic period. Uh, after this, he put out some other records, and then he put out that Greatest Hits that sold, what, 10? million more copies um, huge record for Jeff um, that would that would be a great party record for your party thread uh, Steve Miller's greatest hits and every party I've been to that that's been thrown on is just you know something's gotten broken and it's not a party until something gets broken and that record just brings everybody alive um, but it's kind of old like for listening to it, it's kind of tired it's full of overplayed commercial stuff but this isn't and his first five albums children of the future sailor your saving grace brave new world and number five they're from like his like i said his classic period and uh, the music's kind of psychedelic kind of uh, blues kind of um Sometimes all the songs are blended together. Sometimes they're just little short snippets like the Beatles were kind of doing, rammed together. Um, and they're all over the map. The, very few songs off those first five records are ever played on commercial radio. They're not overplayed. They have this, uh, they, they, have this they sound like they're of the period. Um, so if you see any of those first five Steve Miller albums, buy them. That's my recommendation. Next is... Uh, uh, Dollar Brand, Abdullah Ibrahim, uh, African Dawn on Anja, uh, digital recording from the uh, 1983. Um, I really would have liked to have enjoyed this record, but somehow I just totally missed the fact that inside is actually, this is Dollar Brand, a 1967 recording on Black Lion. Now, this 1967, 68, somewhere around there, uh, recording is a solo piano, uh, solo jazz piano uh, recording, and it's great. It's like uh, solo jazz piano, kind of um, like you, like Keith Jarrett, like that kind of a thing. It's uh, it's it's great. Uh, it would be really interesting to hear what this is like. So if anybody bought the one that has the other and you want to hook up, and you see this video, I'd be interested in trading. Um, definitely recommend This Is Dollar Brand by Dollar Brand on Black Lion. Not what I paid for, but still like it. Um, next up, and and without a sleeve. I'm out of sleeves. I'm out of outers. Um, next up is uh, Steely Dan, Katie Lied. Um, this was a $2 record. Uh, Original, well, er, first, not first pressing, but uh, early, 
original pressing on ABC Records. It's from the first run. Um, it's just side two off this record, the very first press, like very first plates. Um, they have uh, RE-2 uh, scratched into the dead wax. This side two of this has RE-3. Um, so uh, while this is from the first run, it's not a, you know, a, a full proper first, but great record, great sounding record. Um, definitely very happy to get this in my collection in mint condition. Um, not my favorite Steely Dan record, but it's good. My favorite is one that nobody else ever agrees with me on, but uh, I love Royal Scam. I think to me that's their best record, but uh, I've never met anybody who would agree with me on that. Next uh, record I'm just was totally thrilled to find, um, and it's uh, Tropia, A Short Trip to Space. Look at this artwork. Look at this cover. Can you see this cover? Am I holding it up right? Um, I mean, what fantastic artwork. This reminds me of, uh, oh, it's by some guy named Laszlo. Um, his name's Larry Laszlo. Um, it reminds me of uh, a Polish science fiction writer. I can't remember the guy's name. Somebody will put it in the comments, but this artwork just kind of reminds me of what he was doing, and what he was writing. Um, this is, I was so happy to get this. This is a great, great record. I really like Tropia, and, uh, or Tropia, I don't know how you say it. Somebody can correct me on that too. Um, the funk you see is the funk you do. And uh, so that's just a monster song. This has great musicians on it. Uh, Will Lee, who's uh, in Paul Schaefer's, David Letterman, Paul Schaefer's uh, the World Most, World's Most Dangerous Band or whatever it's called now. Um, uh, Rick Morata, fantastic drummer. Um, his brother Jerry Morata is also a drummer who drums with uh, in, who drummed with Indigo Girls, one of my favorite bands, and just a solid lineup of musicians on this. Um, the title track is "Short Trip to Space." It's on YouTube. You should check it out. Um, it it just totally is captures that a short trip to space sound. Um, this is on the Marlin label, um, and. Uh, this one is a, uh, a white label promo, so that was really good to get. And this was five bucks in perfect condition, so I couldn't be happier with this. Great record. Really happy to add it to my collection. And finally, just another total find. Um, Jimmy Smith's The Sermon, by far, in my opinion, by far. This, this is his seminal work. Um, this is on Blue Note 4011. Uh, this is a uh, 33 and a third micro groove, so it's a mono pressing. Um, it's got, you can see the little white dot under the E, so that's like an R, it's a registry mark. Um, so it's not a first pressing, I think this is a second pressing. One side says 47 West 63rd. Um, the other side says New York, USA. So um, it's not a first, but it's a it's early. It's kind of like a transition one. Um, it's got the uh, script form P, or what some people call the ear in the dead box. Um, it's got the deep groove. Um, so really happy to get that. I have a couple other copies of this, but this was two dollars for a, a really early mono pressing. It's really scratched up. But I couldn't say no to it for that price, and uh, it it just I got really lucky that there's a couple scrap there's a couple spots where the scratches tick, but rest rest of the I mean this two dollar record is gorgeous. So oh yeah, um, so that's all the records. And finally, somebody wrote me and asked me about my inner sleeves, and uh, I just thought I'd address that here. These are I get these locally. Um, they're made of. Uh, HDPE 3 mil. Uh, I think HDPE stands for high density polyethylene. Somebody will correct me on that if I'm wrong. Um, they have a little like lip here for one bit, just a little bit higher to make it easier to get the records in the sleeve. Um, they're not 
totally clear. They're a little foggy, but you can still see the labels through them. I've, I've tried everything. I've tried the paper ones with the poly liner. I've tried the uh, the Japanese or the Nagokas where the bottom's rounded uh, and the, they're really thin. I find those to be a total pain in the ass. Um, I've tried them all. These also come in a 2 mil version. I'd prefer the 3 mil version. I just like these sleeves. They have a, a little thickness to them. It, it seems to give it just a little bit more protection for the vinyl. Um, they're, they're substantial. They, they hold their shape when you put them in the uh, jacket. So I know you can get these online in different thicknesses. Um, there's a couple of places that sell sleeves, and I'm sure they carry them. So that's everything. Uh, so uh, that's my recent Vana finds, and uh, I'll be back with another one. Have a great day, and uh, keep the record spinning.